the second geometry test, okay? Show that the point 2 minus 5 is on the line L. So what I want to do is replace x with 2, y with minus 5. So 3 times 2 minus 2 times minus 5 minus 16 equals 0. Multiply it out 6 plus 10 minus 16 equals 0. And then you can say 0 equals 0. And this little uh, signal here means hence point is on line, okay? Now if it balances the point is on the line, okay? So that's what you need to know there. Now, the next thing is, it tells me that 2, we know that 2 minus 5 is on this line. Okay? We know that 2 minus 5 is on this line. And it says, complete the following translation. Now, I'm going to draw out the line to give you a graphical representation of what's going on. To draw a line, I need two points. Okay? I already know that 2 minus 5 is one of the points. So the second point, I'm going to say, okay, let x equal 0. When I let x equal 0, what intercept am I finding? I'm finding the y-axis intercept. So when x equals 0, I'm going to get minus 2y minus 16 equals 0. And then I'm going to get 2y equals minus 16, y equals minus 8. I now have two points, 2 minus 5 and 0 minus 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a big healthy axis here. Okay, and I'm going to draw my two my points. So I'll just go up and fours just to make it a bit easier. If you're only drawing a rough sketch, there's no need to go crazy on like drawing in minus one, minus two, minus three. Once you can basically draw it, you're good to go. Okay, so you can see it's quite a wide, uh, quite a big range here. Okay, now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to write down my two points: two minus five. 2 minus 5 is located here, and then the other one is uh, 0 minus 8, which is here, and then I have a line. Okay, now the line, uh, I'm going to this one here, that's the line there, and the line goes on both ways basically for a long time. So that's the line drawn. Is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Two points on the line. Now, the first thing you got to tell me is what is a translation? A translation means that every point on this line gets moved across by the same amount. That's what a translation means. Okay? So what we gotta do is we gotta look at the translation. And we what we gotta understand is that it's four two minus five gets turned into four minus six. Now I'm gonna colour everything on the new line in blue, just so we, we know that it's a point on the new line. Okay, so this is part one. It's 4 minus 6, okay? And then the next one, what does that mean? It means add 2 to x and minus 1 to y. Do the same thing here. And it's going to become 2 minus 9. So 4 minus 6 and 2 minus 9. Well, 2 minus 9 is here. And 4 minus 6, 4 minus 6 is located here. What can you tell me about the two lines? They're parallel, aren't they? So, guys, put this to memory. All translations make parallel lines. Is that alright? So, but you know the great thing is here? Even if we didn't know that, what do we have? We have two points, don't we? And if we have two points, we're able to get the slope formula. So the slope formula could be, uh, we call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So slope formula, we're going to get minus 9, minus minus 6, divided by x2, which is 2, uh, minus, minus 4. And that's going to get me minus 3 over minus 2. Now guys, but there's a lot of mistakes with the, with, the zero, with the negative signs here. I need to stop, clamp them out. Answer is 3 over 2. You didn't have to do that. I gave people marks who said they knew it was parallel. So I just I didn't give extra marks for that, okay? Now, what you need to do next is you need to get the equation of a line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the original point, which is 4 minus 6. So we're going to get y minus minus 6, which is going to be y plus 6 equals the slope, which is 3 over 2, into x minus 4. 
we're going to cross multiply we're going to get 2y plus 12 equals 3x minus 12 bring the 12 and the 2y over one side 0 equals 3x minus 2y minus 24 and then we get 3x minus 2y minus 24 equals 0 okay to fairness a couple of you has got it okay so a couple of you has got it now that's a translation a translation every point is dragged across the same amount are you happy enough with that okay symmetry it's not as obvious so we're going to do it out longhand way that's the best way to understand symmetry okay so what is the set it's central symmetry in the point what point is it central symmetry in the point minus one minus one, minus one or minus one minus one here okay now guys what central symmetry means the following i have two points and i'm going to highlight them here i have zero minus a and I have a uh, 2 minus 5 0 minus 8 and 2 minus 5 now the difference between a translation and central symmetry is the following central symmetry is like this you go through the point you join your point to the point that point and you go the same distance out the other side so what in effect you're doing is this you're going to get from here I go across 3 and up 4 does everybody see that? Can you see the boxes all right? Across three, one, two, three, up four. So if I go across three, up four, then I go across three, up four, my new point is going to be minus four, three. Now there's a way of doing that without doing the, the graph. The way to do it is like this. You say two, what's that, two minus five by the way, 2 minus 5 turns into minus 1, 1. Minus 1, minus 1. What do they add on to the x value? Minus 3. Minus 3. Take another minus 3 away from it. You get minus 4. What do they add on to the x value? Plus 4. Add on another plus 4, you get 4, 3. That's your first point on the new line. Okay? Your next point on the new line is 0 minus 8 and that gets converted into minus one minus one and how does that happen it goes <coughs> left one up seven left one up seven it should send it all the way up to uh what's it going to be two sorry minus one six is it i'll oh, say minus two six so guys you're going to add one onto minus one onto x and you're going to add on plus seven to y and we're going to get minus 2, 6. Now, what do you think about this line by its look? Parallel. It's also parallel, but it doesn't matter if we don't know that or not. The fact that we have two points means that we have enough information to prove it's parallel. Okay? So it would be 6 minus 3 divided by uh, minus 2 minus minus 4. And that's going to get me 3 over 2. Once again, the slope is 3 over 2. Your formula y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. And what we're going to get here is uh, we'll let 4, 3 be x1, y1. So it's going to be y minus 3 equals 3 over 2 into x plus 4. Because minus minus 4 is plus 4. And then cross multiply 2y minus 6 equals 3x plus 12. Move everything over to one side, and we're going to get 0 equals 3x minus 2y. Bring the 6 over to your side, and we get plus 18. 3x minus 2y plus 18 equals 0. Okay? Tricky for us. That part is quite tricky. Okay? Does everybody. Yes, Connor? From the last question, we learned that any point going through central symmetry turns out parallel. And any line under a general translation also turns out parallel. Now the next one is there's three vertices of a triangle. Okay. Now the formula for these vertices is a half x1 y2 minus x2 y1. What you guys got to do though, however, is you got to change one of the points into zero zero. You lose a lot of marks for not changing one of the points into zero zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a uh, 
I'm going to turn 1 minus 2 into 0, 0. So what's the rule there, guys? What is it? Minus 1 to x and plus 2 to y. There's hidden language in here. What's the hidden language? x-axis. An x-axis point means what about the y value? Zero. The y value is 0. This means that k equals 0. You never needed k to begin with. It's gone from the start. So it's h0. We're going to minus 1 to x gives us h minus 1. 2 to y gives us 2. The next part then is uh, 8 minus 3. We're going to take 1 away from the x value, turn it to 7. And then we're going to add 2 to the y, turn it to minus 1. And now we have our x1, y1 and our x2, y2. So the area of this triangle has to equal 8. So it's going to be a half, h minus 1, y2, which is minus 1, minus x2, which is 7, minus uh, by y1, which is 2. Close bracket. We're going to have a half, h minus 1, minus 4, uh, sorry, h, minus h. Min yeah, you're right, minus h plus 1, because you're multiplying it in. And it's going to be minus 14. And then we're going to have a half minus h minus 13 equals 8. What can we do next, guys? Seven. Bring the 2 up. And you get the modulus is 16. There's two ways of doing this. Can anybody tell me the two ways? Square both sides, get a quadratic equation. What's the faster way? The, the faster way is known that the modulus either has to be 16 or minus 16. So what you can say is minus h minus 13 is 16 or minus h minus 13 is minus 16. Solve both of them and what we'll get is h will equal uh, minus h equals 29. h equals minus 29 or h equals minus 3 and h equals 3. There's your two values of h there. Okay. Alright guys. Uh, moving on. So one Adam can get y change point zero zero. You don't get why we change point zero zero. Okay. I was asked the question why uh, we have to move to the origin and here's the reason why. I want to get the area of this triangle. The problem with the area of this triangle is that it's not on zero zero. So what I do is I do a translation to move the point to zero zero. I move this point here or any point I want to zero zero. This means down two across three. This one in turn will go uh, this one in turn will go down two and across three. And this one here will go down two across three. And what I have when I link this up is I have an identical triangle to the original one. It's the same size. So therefore, if I calculate the area of the new triangle, it's the same as the area of the old triangle. That's why we always move one of the points to zero, zero. Yes, yeah, Shane? You know Guys, in this question here, right, the problem is that they actually give you the answer of the question. Okay, they give you the answer first, and what they do is they, uh, they give you the answer first, and then they're looking for the, uh, uh, they're looking for you to go backwards, right? Now, the key is, it's it, the key is, it's in the language, okay? You have one of them is on the x-axis. Here's A as a point on the x-axis. One of them is on the y-axis. And then, if we link these points together, we have a point in the middle okay and P is a point in the middle so this is A this is B okay and what it says is it divides it internally now guys something that you may not realize is A is to B the, the, the order is very important this means A going to B this means that A to P is 4 B to D is 3 ratio of R is 3 the order is so important with this type of question as opposed to the slope formula and the distance formula. It's very important. Okay, so we know that A equals 4, B equals 3. Now, 
Do we know anything about these two points? No. This one has to be, we we'll call it x and 0 because we don't know what value it is. That one is going to be x1, y1. The second one is going to be, let's call it 0, y. Okay, and call that x2, y2. Now here's what happens. We have our list of uh, numbers now, don't we? x1 is x, y1 is 0, x2 is 0, y2 is y. Okay, so here we go. bx1 is going to be 3 times x, ax2 is going to be 0, all over 7. The next one, by1 is 0, ay2, 4y, once again, all over 7. Now guys, what we know is the answer is this, okay? It's going to be 3x over 7, 4y over 7. And what we know is the answer has to be, what's a 9 minus 8? So we have two equations. We know that 3x over 7 equals 9. 3x therefore is equal to 63, x equals 21. One of the points is 21, 0. Likewise, 4y over 7 equals minus 8. 4y equals minus 56. y equals minus 16. So, sorry, minus 14. Keep making that mistake. The answer for the second one is 0 minus 14. Is that alright? Any questions? Yes? This here is an extra question to try and understand uh, the use of this formula, okay? So what we have is 2 minus 3. The formula is, can somebody call me out the formula again? Bx1 plus ax2 divided by a, b plus a, uh, what's it? Uh, by1 plus? B A Y A Y two, yeah. Okay, now guys, this is very important to look at this. Okay, B plus A. Now, what happens is this here is our answer, taken from the back of the book, and we're going to do it the usual way. Okay. Now, the way I read this in the exam, and please pay attention to this. I look at the first letter, and I go A is automatically x one y one, B is automatically x two y two. This is because it tells me it's on the point AB or the line AB. AB has the point P in between it. It now says that AP is 3 but BP is 4. That's the ratio. It's for every 4 centimeters PB has, AP only has 3 centimeters. Okay, so that's its ratio. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write down our letters, okay? A equals, lads, A equals 3. B equals, anybody? 4. X1 is, here we are there, X2, Y2, right? X1 equals minus 1, X2 equals 6, and then we have Y1 and Y2, okay? Y1 equals 3, Y2 equals minus 11. Now look at this, guys, okay? 4 times minus 1, plus 3 times 6 all over B plus A which is 7 going over BY1 which is 4 times 3 plus 3 times minus 11 all over 7 now that's going to be uh, 14 over 7 which is 2 and this one here is going to be 12 minus 33 what's 12 minus 33? Minus 21, minus 21 over says minus 3. We can see that we got the answer in what we were looking for. Now, people might come across differently, alright? And they might interpret this question differently, okay? So, a very common thing to do here would be to do this. A common mistake would be to label, the, to label them a different way around. That's easily done, isn't it? So I can say this is x2, y2. This is x1, y1. I'm now going to change around these values here. Okay, Shh. excuse me, guys. 
Okay? So what we get is 6 minus 1 minus 11 and 3. Okay, now look at this, guys. Okay, BX1 is now. Okay, BX1 is now 4 times 6. AX2 is now. So what is it? 6. Sorry, 3 times X2, which is 3 times minus 1. The bottom is still the same, it's still going to be 7. And then the top is BY1, 4 times Y1 minus 11, plus AY2, which is 3 times 3, all over 7. Now let's see what happens this time. It's going to be 24 minus 3, 21 over 7. That gives me 3. So right away, we know that the answer is not the same, is it? No. Okay. Now, shh, and then minus 44 plus 3. Sorry? Minus 35, is it? And minus 35 over 7 is 5. Now, guys, minus 5. We can now see that this question wasn't asked properly because we got mixture mixed up in our x1 y1 x2 y2 but there is a way to fix this okay now if i understand it like this okay the formula says shh, okay guys if we start from b if we say b is x1 y1 do you understand if we say b is x1 y1 and we say a is x2 y2 because of the way the formula is set up, okay, this is 3 and this one here is 4. A is the first ratio coming from your points. So basically what happened in our question was when we mix up the points, we also got to change to A and B. Okay, will it work this time? When I change the A and B to A is now 4, B is now 3. Will it work this time around? Let's see. Okay, remember we're still expecting the answer 2 minus 3. So let's figure this out here. Okay, BX1, anybody? 3 times 6 plus 4 times minus 1 all over 7. Turns out to be 14 over 7, which is 2. Looks correct. BY1. 3 times is going to be minus 33 AY2 12 over 7 minus 21 over 7 minus 3 alright giving you way more information than you need here's how you do it excuse me guys to interpret these questions here's what you do excuse me to interpret these questions here's what you always do Whichever letter comes first for you guys is always x1, y1 for this specific equation. Whichever, le whichever letter comes second in the line segment is x2, y2. When you're given the line, A is always the ratio from x1, y1 to the point in the middle is always A. B is always the ratio from that point to the point x2, y2. Always. Do you understand? If you do it this way, you'll never make a mistake. Back to the question before this, I knew that A came first as x1, y1. That's why I labeled it that way. And B came there as x2, y2. People who got the labeling mixed up got different answers. Yes, Connor? If I rewrote the question like this, P is a point on P B A such that A B is three and the other one is four. So basically, what you need to do, Connor, is you basically set up a blank line like so. All right, you write down your two points A and B. Okay. And it doesn't matter which one's which, okay? And what I'm saying here is, whichever one you choose to be X1, Y1, yeah? If I choose that one to be X1, Y1, then the distance from B to P is A. That one is gonna be, is gonna be four, and the other one's gonna be 
three. Whichever one you choose X1, Y1 to be. Okay? You got it? Yep. Yes, Connor. Um, you know where I'm going. <coughs> okay, guys, for question four. Find the slopes of two lines to the point minus three, two, which are a distance two or two from the point uh, minus six, one. All right, guys, so look at this, okay? So, if anybody remembers this question, you have two, you have two points, two lines, they have a point in common. There's a point here, the perpendicular distance from both lines to this point is 2 root 2. That's what we're looking to do. We're looking to find out the length, we're looking to find out the slope of these two lines, okay? So guys, here's what we do. If it goes through this, okay? If it goes through this point, what we do is this. We write down the equation of a line. Then, we don't know the slope, but we know the x1, y1 value. It's going to be y minus 2, and then m into x plus 3. Multiply it out. y minus 2 equals mx plus 3m. You then put everything over to one side. Always put it in the order mx minus 1y plus 3m plus 2. This equals 0. Are you looking guys? Then we're going to get AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Okay guys. Uh, so guys, the formula for distance is AX1 plus BY1 plus C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now guys, the reason why I know how to do this is when it says distance from a certain point, I know, I recognize the question. I actually, I pretty much have the, the question memorized off and I know what formula it links into. That's the only thing I know. Okay, then what I have here is A equals M, because uh, M is in the A position. B is minus one, because minus one's in B position. C is uh, 3M plus two. Okay. And we know what's x1, y1. x1, y1 is the point that the lines are a distance away from. So it's going to be minus, uh, minus 6 and 1. Alright, so people are getting mixed up with the points. Now, enter in your distance formula. D equals ax1, which is going to be minus 6m. m times minus 6 is minus 6m. By1. It's going to be minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. C is 3m plus 2. And that's going to be all divided by the square root of uh, m squared plus 1. Or plus minus 1 squared, which is m squared plus 1. Distance is 2 root 2. 2 root 2, therefore, equals minus 3m plus 1. And then on this one, it's going to be... Uh, m squared plus 1. Don't be afraid if you got a slightly different a, b and c value to me, it'll still work out if you got a minus version of that. If you got a equals minus m, b equals plus 1, and c equals minus 3m minus 2, it actually still works out. Okay? So guys, what we have next is this. Square both sides. 8 equals, square this out, you're going to get 9m squared minus 6m plus 1. That's basically minus 3m plus 1 by minus 3m plus 1. On the bottom we're going to have m squared plus 1. Okay, then cross multiply we get 8m squared plus 8 equals 9m squared minus 6m plus 1. Bring everything over one side, we're going to get m squared minus 6m bring over the uh, minus 8 and you get minus 7 equals 0 okay solve it m minus 7 m plus 1 equals 0 m equals 7 m equals minus 1 is that right? that's our two slopes we weren't asked for the equation of the line so I don't have to go any further if I was asked for the equation of a line I sub in my slope values into this equation here, and I figure it out.
Okay, next question and last one. Frank. <coughs> A line L with slope M contains the point zero 01. K is the line 2x minus y plus 3 equals 0. Theta is the acute angle between L and K. If sine theta equals 3 and 5, find two possible equations of L. What I know automatically is when I see uh, when I see angle between two lines, I will write down this formula before I've even got all the, the rest of the information in. What's it? It's M1 is M1 plus M2 or M1 minus M2? I think it's M1 minus M2 over 1 plus M1 plus uh, M1 by M2. So everybody happy with that? Step one: slope of your first line. M1 is M. What is the slope of your second line? Isolate Y, get Y on its own. Y equals 2X plus 3. Y equals MX plus C. What does that mean about this? What does this mean about the slope of this line? 2. Two. Most people got that. Okay. I want to find out what tan theta is. Unfortunately for me, I know what sine theta is. Sine theta basically means that theta is a right angle triangle, is in a right angle triangle. The ratio is 5 is to 3. Do Pythagoras' theorem. When you do Pythagoras' theorem, you find out that the other side is 4. What is tan theta now, guys? 3 over 4. You're putting your equation together now. 3 over 4 equals the modulus of... What's it going to be? M minus 2 over... 1 plus 2 m. Two different ways you can do this. What's the two different ways, guys? Square both sides, Square both sides and get the uh, quadratic equation, get the reference number. Second way of doing it is like, uh, actually, we'll just square it out. Okay? 9 out of 16, 9 over 16, we're going to get m squared minus 4m plus 4. We're going to get 1 plus 4m plus 4m squared, cross multiply, 36m squared when we multiply this up, 9 times 4m is 36m, 9 times 1 is 9, 16 times m squared is 16m squared, 16 times minus 4 is minus 64m, 16 times 4 is 64, bring everything onto one side, 20m squared. 64m minus 36m is going to get me it's going to get me 100m because you're going to add them together and finally 64 9 minus 64 gets me minus 55 they're all divisible by 4 you do a minus b formula now if you want i'm going to divide everything by 5 sorry 5 4m squared plus 20m minus 11 equals 0 reference number is 4 times minus 11 which is minus 44 break up minus 44 into two numbers uh, what two numbers are you thinking? 22 and 2 plus 22 minus 2 4m squared plus 22m minus 2m minus 11 equals 0 2m bracket m sorry 2m bracket 2m plus 11 minus 1 bracket 2m plus 11 Shh. now what we're going to get is 2m minus 1 2m plus 11 all equals 0 2m minus 1 equals 0 m equals a half 2m equals minus 11 m therefore is minus 11 over 2 have I finished the question yet? Have I? Equations of the line. So I have to do the equation of a line for both of them. 0, 1 being x1, y1. So it's going to be y minus y1 equal to m into x minus x1. Then what you're going to get here is y minus 1 equals m which is a half into x minus x1, x minus 0 cross multiply 2y minus 2 equals x and then the answer will be x minus 2y 
plus 2 equals 0 is the first answer. The second answer is exactly the same, except this is minus 11 over 2. Once again, cross multiply, we get 2y minus 2 equals minus 11x. Bring the 11x over to your side. 11x plus 2y minus 2 equals 0. Okay, guys.